Okay, so um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the ego and, and what is addiction in general. And I'd like to give a little bit of uh, background to that from my own story. Um, I was, you know, as I sort of see it, even though my mother, uh, I, I feel, did have issues around food, you know, I believe I was born, uh, basically born feeling like I didn't really fit into this world, that something was wrong with me, and that I, you know, I didn't really connect right from an early age. I don't believe it was anything my parents did. I just had that right off from the start. So I was just looking, I was just waiting for any type of thing that would just make me feel a little bit more comfortable. And I think, you know, uh, because food was a plentiful thing in early life, that was the thing I gravitated to, just to feel a little bit more comfortable, just to take away the, uh, these feelings of not being able to connect, not being able to, these feelings of not feeling right in myself, right from an early age. So that for me is the, the clear indication that I wasn't feeling connected right from the start right from, you know, right from early, my earliest memories. And um, so this thing of um, what is the ego, well, you know, the Course, now I'm going to tie this into the Course in Miracles. The thing with the Course in Miracles is that um, it says that we're removing the blocks to love. And one of the, uh, you know, as I sort of see, one of the prime blocks to, to love is the ego. And what is the ego? This is my definition of the ego. The ego is basically comprised of all the belief systems um, that one believes, which arise within the ego. They, they might have come from parents, society, school, all these ideas of what, uh, you know, it's like the operational software of, of the ego. Those are the beliefs and the thoughts. What is the difference between a thought and a belief? A belief is something which is a thought which is held very strongly in consciousness, so it repeats over and over again. Like, you know, like, um, you know, like, you can have a thought like, the grass is green. That's not necessarily a strong belief within the ego, because you don't think of it over and over and over and over again. It's not like a repeating thought. You know, those thoughts just come and go within a split second and, and they don't mean anything. But there are certain things which we call beliefs, which are really firmly held thoughts within the consciousness. The other thing is, um, to understand levels of the ego is very, very important to understand um, suppressed feelings or repressed feelings. Now this is one of the core, um, core fundamentals which pull a person down. You know, I was in heavy food addiction and then later on into work addiction in the stock market and later, you know, I had uh, um, relationship issues as well and that took me to, to death and kidney failure and having a, a near-death type of spiritual experience and that led on my spiritual quest meeting spiritual teachers, 12 steps, Course in Miracles, various things but um, so what I now realize is that because I hadn't released all those suppressed emotions and because I was always and here's a, here's a, here's a really important thing to understand is that what I didn't realize, and I think what a lot of people don't realize, is that they're constantly in their thinking and they're constantly repressing their feelings, not allowing themselves to feel, by just finding some kind of distraction or numbing out or addictive activity so that you never get a chance to release your feelings. So it becomes like a, you actually go down, your, your spiritual vibration goes down because you're accumulating more and more of these feelings which haven't been, um, ha that haven't been released. And also, they're synchronistic. The more you have these suppressed feelings, it's like you go down the vibrational scale because you become more full of fear, shame, guilt, anger. Mm -hmm. So you're actually tuning in. I, I call them like radio stations. They're spiritual radio stations or absence of spiritual radio. When you get down to the bottom, it's like addiction and suicidal ide ideation. So that's pretty like you're totally cut off from the light in the universe, from your soul, from the infinite light and presence and joy and freedom and, the, and that natural divine intuition and clarity and the synchronistic miracles which are there. You're totally cut off from that. You're in the darkness, metaphorically in the pits of hell. So once you understand that, 
these two components are the, the two things you have to release to start to edge your way up the vibrational scale. So addiction is one of the worst ways. When you're an addict, I was a, a, my primary was food, but I went into others, work addiction, other addictions. When you're an addict, you're actually, you never get to feel anything. You're constantly, you, you, by being an addict, it means that you're an extremist already. Just that definition. It means you will never, you know, you're just piling up the feelings more and more. And you're going down the vibrational scale because, you know, I would never feel a feeling. I'd be in the food, and then later I'd be in the work, or then I'd be obsessed about some person. So, you know, there is absolutely no room. You're just repressing feelings and going down the scale. And as you go down the, 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 the scale, you find your, your thinking becomes more and more faster. So, at, at, you know, the thing is, like, the more you go down the vibrational scale, the more rapid your thinking is. It's like constant. It's like a never-ending stream of thoughts, one after the other, rapidly. And, um, and as you're going down the vibrational scale, as I said, you know, addictions, later when you get to the darker levels, it's, it's uh, suicide or, or wanting to kill others, those kind of thoughts start to arise. Because you're, why? Because you're blocked off from the light. You're bro blocked off from your consciousness. Or even if you did, you know, at, at higher levels, you might even get some spiritually intuitive thoughts, but you totally ignore them. You know, you'd just be drenched in this dark, <clears throat> this darkness and these obsessive thoughts which would run you. You could call that um, powerlessness. It is in some places it's called powerlessness. You know, it's like this energy has gripped you and these thoughts have gripped you and you just do them. There, there is no other option that's, that's available. So those are the, the, darkest, uh, the darkest levels. Then as you, um, as you do spiritual work, um, uh, they, you know, they, they might be 12-step programs, they, they might be um, uh, spiritual teachers or A Course in Miracles. Then, you know, I, I particularly loved uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Hawkins, explained it uh, a lot, which is um, you've got to like, you know, so um, being obsessed with a person is distracting, um, wanting a person to, to fix me is distracting, Wanting, you know, escaping from my feelings by eating, um, eating food is a distraction, and um, one of my big ones actually, and uh, <laughs> and um, and um, you know, putting the, the the TV on, you know, it's a more subtle one, uh, but putting the TV on, reading a newspaper, all of these things are more subtle ones, but there are uh, you know some major ones: alcohol, drugs, gambling. All these various various things, and you're always blotting out your feelings. So, and the thoughts. So they go together. So hopefully that that's clear. So as you go down, your thoughts become more rapid. Your negativity, um, uh, low self-esteem, shame, guilt, fear, incessant cravings, obsessive thinking. One, you know, always this idea of something external that will fix me in this constant. You know, that at, the le at certain levels constant craving for something to, to, to get relief, you see. So, as you undo it, so the two things you have to undo are you have to start getting into the, the um, frame of mind of wanting to release your feelings and not engage in your thinking. Now, the Course in Miracles, one of the earliest lessons, which is why it's, uh, for me, a Course in Enlightenment, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I go to 12 steps, they're very good for releasing addiction, but they're not going to get you into the eternal presence. You know, you need something more heavy duty spiritually, like the Course in Miracles or Teachers of Enlightenment, uh, you know, Muji, Eckhart Tal, Dr. Hawkins, they will take you to the final gates. But, um, so feelings, here's one thing, you know, for everyone is to know that even if you you know, if you did this, te this technique I'm about to share with you is very, very powerful if you're any kind of addiction or uh, fear, anxiety, um, love addiction. We'll be talking a little bit about love addiction and codependency today. So, is that... Um, so, you know, really, uh, addiction or being heavily in your ego is like uh, excessive thinking and not feeling. So, 
one has to, if one wants to go up the spiritual scale, one has to have like a, a commitment to being in the opposite direction consistently. You know, because the ego just wants to be constantly thinking or obsessed about something external to fix, to get a fix, and not feeling. So <coughs> then, you know, there has to be like a radical shift, or even a prayer to God, you know, help me to allow myself and give me the, the right teachers and tools and courses to, to accelerate my progress towards spiritual freedom. Because the more you're going into your thoughts and repressing your feelings or going into addiction, the more you're going into bondage, you know, the, you know, the, dark, the darker levels of experience. So here's the tool, and this is a very powerful tool, and it works for absolutely everything, whether you're in fear, shame, anxiety, food addiction, love addiction, um, you know, shame, um, you know, <clears throat> anything. It's like, I call it the feel the feeling tool. It would be like, if, if you were listening to me now, it would be like um, just being aware, I, I'd say it in a simple way, be aware of what, you're, what are the sensations you're feeling now in your body. Is there an ache? Is there, is there a pain? Is there a feeling of like neediness? Is there, a, is there a feeling within the body of tension or tiredness? You know, what's actually being, what are the, the sensations? Now you're starting to tune into these things and you're opening up the gateway just to allow yourself to be conscious of and start to experience actually what there is. So that's the, that's the first aspect of it. The other thing is to know that, especially if you're suffering right now, is that you have extreme thoughts going non-stop, you know, and you'll be constantly in your thoughts rather than just allowing yourself to experience your feelings, just be in one thought after the next, you know. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I could have done that. Oh, why did this happen to me? Constantly <coughs> in, in your thoughts. So you've got this is the, the next aspect of it, is that you've got to learn this uh, discipline of catching your thoughts quicker and quicker and disengaging from them and just going back to what's being experienced or felt in the body. So, like, if this is the first time you he you're hearing me, it'd be like okay, oh yeah, there is a feeling in my body, and then you're back in your thinking. But, so here's the practice, I'm, I'm sort of slowing it down. So, but you're just supposed to be experiencing your feelings, you're not supposed to be thinking at all. So the first time you, you realize, you're very quickly, oh yeah, there's, let's say there's um, a pain in my stomach, for example. There isn't actually, but I'm just using it. Pain in my stomach, that's what I'm feeling right now. So I go, right, so the, the thing would be just to allow yourself just to experience that without thinking but you'll realize very quickly you're off into a thought within a split second. So here's a practice in slow motion. Catch it as quickly as you can that you've hooked into the start of a thought and it's going to go, oh, I wish this person had said something different. No, now you want to catch it as quickly as possible, disengage, detach, back to just <coughs> allowing yourself to experience what's in the body. Then you realize, back, bam, you're back in a different thought. I wish it wasn't so cold. No, just cut that thought don't give your attention to it and back to just what you're feeling. Yes? Um, but doesn't, don't you get to a point where, because there's so many thoughts going through your head where you're constantly doing that, where, because the thoughts just keep coming, they tend to be negative and even, so sometimes I just give up. I'm like, what's the point of even stopping it? Because there's another one and there's another one. All right. So let, let's say, uh, and actually I'll be, I'll be talking a little bit differently, but I, on a simplistic level, let's say you have free choice. Mm -hmm. So you can either be putting your, this isn't actually at the highest level, but we'll say it for now. You can either be putting your attention on the thoughts, mm -hmm. or you can just be allowing your attention to soak into what's being felt in the body. Mm -hmm. So every split second, there's an option. Thought or thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mean, I guess there's an old spiritual saying, it's like, what are you going to feed? You know, like the, th the thinking is going to take you deeper into darkness. Mm -hmm. and, and breaking the addiction to thinking and those patterns which take you into turmoil because they're based in... When you have rapid thinking, it means that you're, you're more at the lower vibrations. So they're all going to be bad. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like uh, negative or mm -hmm. destructive things. So, so it's like surrendering to the addiction. The, the addiction is thinking, and, and the, the more you addict to thinking, the, da the more darker you'll get, 
you see, because there's no, there's no light, there's no solution. So it's like, I, I have one split second right now. Either I can be trying to just be with what I'm feeling right now and break my addiction to that thought that just wants to hook me in, or I could just give up and just say, I'm just going to be in my thinking nonstop. So, I mean, does it, how does that sound to you? Yeah, no, there is that choice. I, I guess sometimes I just get lazy where I'm just like, I give in to the thinking. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good, no. I mean, you want to be inspired. And, and I mean, we're trying, to, we're trying to inspire, you know, well, what, I, what I would say is because I heard of this practice and also had that near near-death spiritual experience, I knew that there's amazing light and joy and happiness I can connect to. Mm -hmm. And I knew that the, the, the teachers that were sharing about this had also done that, we were giving the roadmap of how to let go of the darkness and that it was possible and that you can. So I've gone from the, the darkness by employing a few spiritual things, you know, this, this tool, of course in miracles, some, some spirit, teachers of enlightenment, 12 steps, by methodically doing that, and you know, they, they, they did take me to death nearly. So, you know, and I'm now like, you know, catapulted into another dimension of happiness and joy and presence and serenity. And I'm sort of slowing it down. So it, it's definitely worth doing it. Is, you know, usually in the start, it is difficult mm -hmm. because it's an addiction. Addiction is like you're hardwired to being in your thinking and bad behaviors all the time. So it's not going to be like, Oh, if, if you're like constantly addicted to being your thoughts non-stop and your behaviours non-stop and never feeling anything, it's not going to be easy to reverse that. I mean, you know, it just isn't. You know, it's like if someone was repeatedly banging their head non-stop for like 10 years constantly and you said, you know, you're going to be happier if you stop trying to stop doing that. You know, it's going to be difficult in the beginning because you're like going like that non-stop, you see. So it's going to take it. But, it is, but it's doable and it's worth it. And, you know, often in like, um, we'll be going, we'll be talk, I'll start talking about it, like withdrawal. Like if, you, if you're in the deeper layers, like I was in the deeper layers of addiction, then they, they often talk about it being withdrawal, you know, alcohol, drugs, relationship withdrawal. They actually give it a name, they call it withdrawal, because the tendency to not feel and to keep those behaviours and thoughts going non-stop is so extreme that the process of, they, they call it the withdrawal process, you know, if someone's been drinking non-stop for years and years, <laughs> or taking drugs, or being in bad relationships non-stop, it is, a, an ex, initially it's an extreme process, because it's like one is so hardwired to keep doing that thing, and then it seems like there's huge forces from within the ego to like keep doing it again and again. So, but... Um, I mean, I go to 12-step fellowships and, um, you know, I think uh, millions have been saved from all kinds of grave addictions, life-threatening things. And, you know, withdrawal can take, you know, it may take anything from three months to a year or something. But, it get, you know, after a while it gets easier. And is it worth, I mean, there's hope and light that way and there's only deeper darkness going down the other way. So it's like, it's like, which cho which way do you want to go? And uh, I can I can tell you it's definitely worth the, worth the effort. It's not easy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. And and it is like it's a fearsome battle. But here's the thing: it's like every moment. It's like if let's imagine that there's peace and serenity right here, right now. But you just have to let you have to just allow your feelings to be released, and stop going to your thoughts incessantly. You know, is it worthwhile starting that process? I mean, this is very similar to meditation. Now, meditation for addicts uh, or people in addiction seems an extreme opposite. You know, just, but how, how do you, well, this is the process I'm talking about. It's like every split second, you can either like give up and just be in your thoughts nonstop and thereby not feel your feelings, or you can start, you, can, you know, the, the only time to start the process is now, because that's the only time there is now, you see. So it's, 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 an exciting, it's an exciting opportunity. And for me, the, the other way is just to go deeper into darkness. Uh, uh, you know, it's like surrendering to, you know, it's like if I was an alcoholic, well, I've been drinking for 30 years and my life's pretty miserable. 
and but it, it's it's a strong addiction, and I tried to give up uh, a few seconds ago, and it was difficult. So I'm just going to carry on drinking. You know, okay, well you can do. I mean, it's like, or you know, you can start the long process. You know, in the beginning, it's like, okay, I've I've gone I've gone deeper in. I felt my feelings, and I've not gone in. I've tried, and the next minute you're in the thought, but the next thing you have an option, and you try and, and then it gets easier and easier and easier each time you do it. You see, and then that the light starts to come in. Eventually, you get the the initial withdrawal process can be very painful, but then if you've gone through one withdrawal, you'll know it's worth it. You know, the beginnings are going to be tough, but then you get through. You know, like I had food withdrawal. You know, and then I went through that, and then I worked on relationships withdrawal. Then I went through that, and then you know, okay, well, it's a little short period. It's going to be tough, and then you go through, and then you you you're on a new elevated level. Uh, like uh, I haven't been in food addiction for like nine years now. It's like it's not a. Whereas before, it would be a fixation. So, how how does that sound? Yeah, it's, it's it's correct. I can because um, I think for me it's like, um, and it's crazy because I I get fixated with my own thoughts, and I think um, there's a saying right where you can't solve it at the level of thought, where you can't. Um, at the level of thinking that brought you there and but then sometimes I believe in so much power of the mind and um, so it's a process for me but I agree that you know when I am feeling well there is there, it's lighter it's easier to choose better options but I guess at the moment I'm mired in that in the pain and the withdrawal and um, I, fi I find that that's an accurate description where it's a psych like, it's a period that I just have to go through and um, experience Yes. I mean, the, the, this technique I, I'm, I'm sort of sharing, which I call the field of feelings, is an advanced technique. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are other places like 12-step fellowships, which would be a bit easier. I mean, uh, in certain 12-step fellowships, they talk about only just do it for a few, just do your addiction for like a few seconds, and then you can, and then you should stop, and then you can go back for a, th you know, a few seconds. But this is like more advanced than that. It's like every moment, let's like, not try not to basically break break the thought as quickly as you can catch it and go back to the feeling so in the beginning like you might be okay you might be in your thoughts for like 10 minutes and then remember and then you go back to your feeling for one second and then you're back in your thinking for 10 so that's pretty bad really mm -hmm. but then if you keep applying that every day you're going to make progress like you can catch your being in the thinking quicker and quicker and then back to your feeling Eventually you get to these wonderful places, because I've been doing spiritual work now, I think, for about 17 years. And, uh, you know, it, actually you become, you do, you're wired not to go into your thinking, just to be in this, you know, we'll get to the stillness and the presence and the peace uh, later on. And, and you've, you've, un, you've un addicted yourself to, to that stuff. And now just being, being at peace and being present is just your natural state. So it's well, well worth it as you let go. But anyway, so that's the process of feeling the feelings. That's the one thing. So you're just catching the thoughts and just allowing yourself to experience the feelings. In the beginning, you'll be straight back in the thinking. But again, how quickly can you catch? Oh, I'm in my thinking. Now I'm going to just feel what's in my body. So eventually you'll get to these places where you'll be able to have, like, a lot of the time, let's say you're doing like 20 minutes of just feeling the feeling, sitting down with your eyes closed, you'll be like feeling, and th these, these aches and pains will start disappearing, or they start shifting from one place to another, like a pain might go into anger uh, here, and then you're feeling that anger out, and that anger might go into something stuck here, and you're feeling that out. And every, every time you do that, they'll get, eventually they'll get less and less. And that, that will be like under releasing the underpinnings of constant thinking and also those negative thoughts and behaviours that, that arise out of them. And actually, even if you did this, if you were able to do this one tool on its own, it would take you all the way to enlightenment because you're doing the two things, practising not being your thinking and just releasing everything that's being held, all those suppressed or repressed emotions. So that would take you, if you just kept doing it to the nth degree, you you just <laughs> release everything in the ego, because you're not you're just not going to be in your thought right now for this moment, not in any thought. So and then after you've released all the things, that there'll be there'll be an eternal silence and peace and joy uh, that was always there, but has been masked by all this muck. Mm. So. Um,
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I totally relate what you're saying, Sabir. But um, and I have experienced when you have, um, have I've had that experience when you have, you know, you just your mind goes crazy, you know, and the thinking, you know, just kind of goes, you know, absolutely, you want you cannot shut up your mind. But I've experienced the opposite too, you know, when you have, it's almost like an addiction to feelings, it's almost like the mind goes numb, but the feelings are kind of, the emotions are so overwhelming, you know, this is almost like, um, almost like, you know, there's not that much thinking because the, 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 the emotions are so overwhelming. Yes. Too. Um, yeah. So, yes. I think... Um... Even even with that, then it, it's kind of a it, well. It, I would say it's kind of a grace. You're just having to yeah. allow whatever huge feelings are arising mm. to to be experienced out. I think with, yeah, no, with, that, that's <coughs> what I have been doing as well. It's just what I'm saying is just kind of um, yeah, I've experienced both of them. What you're saying, you know, that happens, and also experience the opposite too. That yes. actually he gets. You know, lots and lots of emotions. It's almost like you know, you don't right. really even realize that the mind is going on because the emotions are so overwhelming. I think it's, also that that's more, yeah. more more an advanced level. I mean, for people who are very new, mm. um, usually there's huge amounts of feelings, and whatever thoughts there are, are pretty bad, dark thoughts. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, when you're getting down to addiction, it's like an extreme feeling. And something like, I need to kill myself to escape this feeling, or I'll just take some alcohol or drugs so I can kill the pain straight away. So you, it's not usually, otherwise they go through all their feelings. Addicts mm. don't really go. They usually get some kind of addictive or, or negative mm. destructive thought, so they don't feel. So you're more advanced when you can just allow the feeling without any type of thought intruding on there. Because that would be great, you know, because mm. you know, addiction, that would cure addiction pretty quickly, you see. It's so like I've got a bad feeling, and you can't, you won't have the thought to take a drink. Mm. So that's pretty good, you know. This, per the love of my life, just dumped me and went with someone else. You won't get the thought. Well, I need to kill myself to end it. You see, you just go through it. You see, so that'd mm. be good. And that's quite. Adv that's an, you know, that's a good thing. Later on, when you when you're doing spiritual work, because you've mastered it, you just have the feeling, and you won't go into thoughts. You'll just experience it. Mm. But addicts are pretty much they'll they'll have some kind of thought to try and escape or mm. if they're a, if you're a love addict it'll be like okay I got dumped but I'm going to get someone by tomorrow you see mm. or if you're an alcoholic <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> maybe maybe that the, the, the fast ones probably within a few seconds but <laughs> that's probably that's probably high addiction yeah. <laughs> the low addiction. <laughs> Extreme love addiction. <laughs> it's like they'll probably get one within five minutes or something. Yeah, so to, many replace hours have I <laughs> to, to replace the old model. <clears throat> For an alcoholic, it wouldn't be like I'm getting that drink right now, you know. <clears throat> or well, for me, it'd be like I'm getting a bag of donuts straight away. You know, I'm not going to feel this. So, so that so, but you're 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 undoing, you're undoing this stuff and. Um, yeah, so that that's that's the one. The other the other thing would, is the Course in Miracles, and the Course in Miracles is systematically giving you 365 lessons to uh, release your fundamental beliefs uh, belief system of the ego, and it uh, like all my thoughts are meaningless. Meaning, do not go to, you know, like the thought. Let's have a glass of alcohol right now to escape. The, that thought is meaningless. Let it go. You know, or, you know, I've just had a breakup, I need someone else, ASA, you know, that's a meaningless thought, let it go, you see. So, or uh, another one of my favourite course lessons is, I pray for a miracle to see this situation differently. I pray for a miracle, God, I pray for a miracle to see this relationship break up differently. You know, give me your insight you know, onto how I can release it. Or I pray for a miracle to see my alcohol addiction differently. So these, all these course lessons, or um, let's say I feel like a person hasn't treated me well. Uh, God is the love in which I forgive this person who didn't treat me well, you know, as, as I should have been treated. So that, that, that's uh, one of the lessons, or 
So they give you different ways of just releasing your thoughts and, and inviting a more higher spiritual perspective into your consciousness. Now the um, <clears throat> so here's the thing. So at, you know when there's a lot of thinking, negative thinking, and there's a lot of repressed feelings, then you're 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 either in obsessive bad behaviors or relationships, or you're in active other you know substance addictions or whatever, or food addictions. And as you get higher, you start to get access to something like your intuition. Now here's the thing to know with uh, intuition, is that intuition doesn't come from your thinking. It's coming from a different source, a, a higher plane. However, if you've got too much muck in the way, too much addiction or anything, you, you won't be able to act on it. You'd be powerless to just carry on. The, 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 dark, the dark stuff. Now... <clears throat> Yeah, so um, here's the thing. <clears throat> Once you've let go of this stuff, there's a, you know, generally uh, addiction is like neediness and wanting, wantingness and desperation. Mm -hmm. um, and as you, as you just allow yourself to sit with those energies of neediness or wantingness or your addiction to thought, you're releasing it. And if you release enough of your neediness and wantingness, you'll get to places of peace and serenity. And here's the thing, peace... When you're in peace, there is absolutely no neediness in there, or wantingness. You know, it's totally serene. So, so hence all the enlightened teachers say, there's nothing I need or want. Because when you're at peace, there is nothing you need or want, you know. But when you're disconnected from the source, you're always wanting something external <clears throat> to feel better. So, um, and the, okay, so here's the, th <clears throat> the last thing. You know, the Course talks about, if all your thoughts are thoughts are meaningless and then later on it says that I'm not a body I'm free for I'm as God created me so here's here's the the, the last uh, one of the one of my other favorite tools and this can be used straight from the beginning uh, let's call it the observer tool so it's like even if you've got lots of thoughts say like <clears throat> like if I hold this um, <clears throat> this pen like, you're not the pen, are you? You're observing the pen. Okay. So, what about thoughts? Now, like, if that was a pen, everyone would say they're not the pen. And a pen may pass, it may come and go, but it's clear that it's not you, because you've observed it coming and going. So, thoughts. Are you a thought, or are you that which observes the thoughts? The observer. Yes, right. Good, good. So, hence the thing. So, let's say there's addiction to thoughts. Um, but then, so either you can, be in the, you can be believing you're the pen and in the pen, or you can be actively in each moment, seeing if you can be the observer of the pen. So, one way is like surrendering to being in the pen constantly, or the thoughts constantly. The other way is every option, there's the chance to recognize that one is the observer, of the thoughts, and the next one is, one is the detached observer of the thoughts. And the next one is, one is the uninterested detached observer of the thoughts. Because look, if this pen is really, really interesting, you'll notice it. But what would happen if you were not interested in this pen? Would you notice it? No, you wouldn't. That's true. Anything that is, un, that is not interesting or is not given attention to or is not given any value to, or is not made a higher power or special, it's actually not noticed at all. So he here lies the power with thoughts, you see. If all your thoughts, there was no interest, if the observer had zero interest in thoughts, there would be no thoughts in this moment. So you see how the power can shift, you see, and is it worth um, this exercise? So, but also the same thing with emotions. Even if, like, there's a craving, Oh, I wish this person hadn't abandoned me or let me down. It's a feeling. Let's say there's a feeling of that. Uh, uh, let's say betrayal, whatever it is. Well, what's observing this feeling? Is the observer of this feeling in feeling betrayed? And the observer is not. Is actually not. You know, he's just watching the feeling. You see. So that's the other tool for releasing it. So as you get, so you, gradually as you're releasing these feelings and thoughts, you're going up into these 
higher um, these higher vibrations. Okay, I'll stop there.